Ooh, they seem to like the grains. All right, this is good. Oh, they seem very happy with these grains. Heavy's like, wait a minute. Why did they get more eggs than I got? Well, I've got something unfortunate to show you all. Good morning, large white farm dog. How are you guys doing? You are muddy and brown, not very white. I know, you guys want to go see our newest addition. Inside, inside. Yes, ever since the pigs got here to the farm, the dogs have been very, very curious, but I've held them back so far. But it's probably about the right time to introduce Mr. Toby Dog to the pigs. Come on, Toby, we're gonna go meet the pigs. Let's go, come on. He's very curious, he's sniffing around. I'm actually gonna hang back. I wanna see what he does. Oh, he chooses to mark his territory. Oh, he's actually more curious about the woods than he is about the pigs. I guess I'll have to head over there and make a proper introduction. Toby, I'd like to make an introduction to the newest members of our farm. I think he's already gotten used to it. He realizes they don't need to be here. He's much more interested in marking his territory on the edge of the woods. Livestock guardian dogs have that instinct of wanting to mark their territory. It's like much, much higher than like your typical dog. And so that's what he's doing. I'll give him a couple minutes. I know you guys are probably curious to visit with our newest members of the farm. You can see him right in there. Looks like they're taking a nap. How's it going guys? Or girls, I should say. Yeah, we have three female pigs actually. They've been enjoying their space so far, but it does look like they've eaten most of their food. So let me go get some feed and then we'll go back in there and visit with them. So my friend Jeff owns a brewery. Brewery's right here in this area. It's actually in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. It's called Whirly Gig. It's something he started a couple of years ago, actually right in the middle of the pandemic, but he's really been successful and thriving. If you like some great unique beers, as well as some really exquisite food like if you're in this area it is like the best place to go Jeff is just an incredible brewer he uses a lot of interesting and unique ingredients from the area who knows there might even be a gold Star farm collaboration in the not too distant future well anyway as a byproduct of his brewing process one of the things that he often has are brewers grains and if I look inside here what you see is the leftovers from making beer one of the biggest reservations I had about getting pigs is it's an animal that's gonna still require more inputs onto the farm. Like if I want our farm to be truly regenerative, I need to think about how do I limit the number of inputs and things that I bring on the farm and how much of our farm can actually be like a closed loop ecosystem. You know, that's why I'm such a huge fan of cattle because really all they're eating is grass and hay. Whether that's something coming from a couple miles away or from our farm, that feels very regenerative and sustainable to me. Chickens and ducks are animals that we raise on our farm, but unfortunately they do require grains to be fed. And so I have to go to a feed store where I buy the feed and even though a lot of the feed comes from us right here in this area and it requires just a whole heck of a lot of inputs to create that feed and bring it here. From that same perspective when I look at geese the reason I like geese better than ducks and chickens is because geese are essentially getting most of their diet in the warm months by eating all the lush green grass that we have on the farm much like our cattle here. Hi Joey. How's it going pal? Yeah? You let me scratch you? Joey keeps getting friendlier and friendlier. Well when it comes to pigs, part of why I wanted to use pigs is because they are like the ultimate composters. You know, chickens are great for composting, but pigs are even better. And so a lot of our household scraps as well as farm scraps go to the pigs. Like for example, if I have duck eggs that are cracked or duck eggs that I don't know the age of and I don't want to give for people to eat, I will take those duck eggs and now feed them to the pigs. But that alone is not going to be enough to reduce my feed bill for the pigs. And so my buddy Jeff is going to be hooking me up with grains all summer so I can feed the pigs the grains from the beer. And so rather than taking fresh grains and feeding it to the pigs, I'm using these brewer's grains and feeding it to the pigs. And so I'm reducing the input costs required to raise these pigs. I'm probably gonna also be looking for it a couple of other ways to add diversity to their diet and continue to reduce my feed bill. My goal is to raise these pigs with as few inputs as possible other than recycling and composting. Good morning, ladies. Yeah, all three pigs of ours are female. We got some food treats for you girls. How you doing? You know, it's kind of funny. The pigs got here, let's see, yesterday at around nine o'clock in the morning and it started pouring rain by about 11 o'clock and it's been raining most of the time that they've been here. So I feel bad for them. Hey girls, how are you doing? Hey, hey. Sorry, I didn't mean to spook you. Just here to visit. Big, big, big. 
Yeah, it looks like they have a little bit of food left, but they've eaten most of it. Now, as far as what these blueberry greens are like, I think this one's like a mixture of barley and some oats. It's got kind of a pungent fermented smell. Not bad, like actually kind of nice. But yeah, I wonder if they're gonna like it. Hey girls. You don't seem like you wanna come out right now. <laughs> okay, well, we'll let you stay in there for now. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna add this to their feed bucket. Let's see how they do with it. You know, one question folks have had is whether I'm going to restrict how much food my pigs get or just give them as much as they want. And I would actually say for the most part, I'm just gonna give them as much as they want. The dogs seem riled up again. It seems like anytime the pigs make noise, the dogs get all riled up. The pigs are quiet, the dogs are quiet. Hey, sweetie. Yeah, new food source. Oh, what do you think? Okay. Hey, show mommy how the piggies eat. Ooh, they seem to like the greens. All right, this is good. Now the big girl is interested. Yeah, I don't have names for them yet. I will name them. And if you guys have suggestions for the names, they're three girls. Abby, calm down. It's okay. Maybe I'll let you visit if you calm down, okay? Well, they seem very happy with these greens. Still getting used to me, huh? Okay, that's cool. Well, I think they like it. So we're gonna let them do their thing and we've got other animal chores to do. And there's a couple other things I need to show you taking place on the farm right now because we are like full on in spring mode. And so I've got some bad news and I've got some good news that I wanted to share with you about other things happening on the farm. Okay, Abby, let's go do our animal chores now. Come on, inside. Oh shoot. Yeah, I've got some spring repairs I need to do. It's one of the main farm projects we have going on right now. Sort of like once all of the snow recedes, you start to find like garbage everywhere and things you want to clean up and things you need to get ready. And so we are full on in the spring rush at this point. Let's go greet our birds. Good morning, birds! How are you doing this morning, birds? Huh? So I suppose I should start off with the bad news first. Do you guys remember that mother goose who's been sitting on a nest of chicken eggs and for like the last, I don't know, nine days or so, she's been trying to hatch out those chicken eggs? Yes, this goose right here. Well, I've got something unfortunate to show you all. Off you go, lady. Please get up, please get up. Let me go over here so I can talk to you. So I don't know if you saw that when she got off her nest, but unfortunately, all of the chicken eggs are gone. My theory is that either she or the other birds started to eat them. There seems like there's a duck that's laying eggs. At least when she just got up right now, I saw two full eggs and one broken egg. And I think yesterday when I was in there, there were four duck eggs under there. And so I don't know what's happening or what's caused it, but all the chicken eggs are gone. And so she's not gonna be hatching out any chickens. And so, I don't know, I'm a little bit bummed. I was really hoping that that experiment would prove to be something and it doesn't seem like it would. And for the folks who would say that I shouldn't bother her while she's sitting on a nest, I've actually found over the years that it's really important to keep checking on the nest on a regular basis if you want to increase your odds of having the goose hatch those eggs. So that's why I do it. So it looks like I got a good goose egg and a handful of duck eggs, but I also just noticed a problem underneath the chicken coop. It seems like some of my ducks and chickens have been laying eggs in this nest underneath here. Now I've got about, I don't know, eight or nine eggs here. I don't know how old they are. They've been laid probably in the last three or four days, but I can't guarantee that they're all in the last 24 hours. And so ordinarily, this would be the type of thing I feed the dogs, but this is way too many eggs, so we'll feed them to the pigs at the end of the video. Abby, what are you doing? Oh, Abby dog, you're filthy, girl. You're filthy. Oh, hey, what's that on your... Hey, do you have a spot? Abby, I think you got something on you. Come here. 
I think she's got a tick on her. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to quite catch it on camera, but Abby had a tick like right where like my eyebrow is on her dog face. And I pulled it off. The good news is it looks like it's a wood tick, which doesn't transmit Lyme disease. As you guys know, she actually has the Soresto collar. She and Toby both wear that. As well as the fact that Abby actually has the Lyme disease vaccine. We're waiting on it with Toby for just a little bit longer because he's coming off of Lyme disease. But this one was fresh. I mean, she didn't have it on her when I was out here at eight o'clock last night. And so it's less than 12 hours that it's been on her and it doesn't even look remotely engorged. So we got it in time, but it's just a really good reminder for all of us that we should be paying attention to our animals and watching for ticks because we are officially in tick season, particularly in this part of the country. I know most of the ducks are outside, but I guess it is time to release the Kraken. I am curious to see how the birds react to these grains as well. The birds seem pretty pleased with the grains, which is a good thing because if I can reduce the amount of grain that comes onto the farm from the ducks, the chickens, and the geese, as well as the pigs, I feel like that brings our farm to a much more regenerative place. Uh-oh, do you guys see what I see? Stray duck egg. We got one stray duck egg, two stray duck eggs, three stray duck eggs. Oh no, four, five, six. Oh, this one's gonna be so gross to grab. Ugh. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh no, Abby, this makes an even dozen. Oh, gross. I got a dozen duck eggs just randomly left outside. You know, I noticed my count was short yesterday and this morning, and this is the reason why. So because the ducks can get in and out now, they're deciding to lay their eggs out here in the stream that I'm building. Well, that is very unfortunate. I'm gonna really have to solve this problem. Look how happy the geese are. <laughs> They love doing their thing in these ponds. Abby's still not quite sure what to make of goose mating. She feels like she should intervene, but I keep stopping her and she's following rules pretty well. Of course, she decides to pee in the stream. <laughs> now you guys might be wondering, with our grass becoming lush and green and our pond full, why am I not letting my birds out? Well, there's something else I need to show you. And this is the good news I promised you. Oh, well, would you look at that? The turkey vultures are in full force. They definitely have the dog's attention. Yes, I know everybody's been wondering when are the ducks and geese gonna get to enjoy the pond and why are they still inside this area? And yeah, you're letting them have a little bit of muddy stream, but the rest of the pond is completely untouched. And this is generally like the best time of the year for them. Well, the answer is because I'm trying to give my pond a little bit of a rest period. And so this year almost entirely, I'm gonna be excluding the birds from having regular access to the pond. You know, and consulting with some folks who know more than I do, you know, one of the things that they said is just given the number of birds that I have, particularly ducks and geese, the amount of pressure I'm putting on this area is pretty extreme. I would do good to like let it rest let plant life return and kind of pop back up and like really grow and become a pond because this wasn't originally a pond and just be a little bit patient. And so I have been doing that. And here's actually the crazy thing though that I've noticed that's happened now that has happened never like before. You know, in the past, we've had frogs here in our pond and it's like, you know, usually in the summer, you can hear them out here bellowing away and doing their frog thing. But what I've never seen before that I'm seeing this year because the birds haven't had access do you see all of those? Like those black globules right there? I'm gonna try giving you guys a little bit of a better close up here. You see all that? Those are frog eggs down there. And so we've had frogs coming back out here. And it's a species of frog, and I, I don't know, I gotta look it up, but I've never seen them traditionally before. It's funny, they make this like weird noise and I have to like sneak out here because as soon as they catch wind that I'm around, they all dive underwater and hide. I'm actually looking to see if I can find some right now. You might even notice there's this like plastic stool that Abby dragged in from inside there. But the reason I haven't moved it is because if you look really closely at it, you can see the frogs attached a whole bunch of eggs to it. And so 
it's serving as habitat as well. And so just by giving it rest, I have new animal life coming into the ecosystem of our farm. Those eggs probably were laid in years past, but because we had so many ducks out here, my theory is that they probably decimated them. And so now what we're trying to do is essentially let this part of the pasture turn into a little bit of a pond swamp area, have it lead into there down to the stream. The idea being this stream and wetlands area helps filter the water. I'll probably actually be growing stuff a little bit further down that way as well to siphon some of that nutrition. And particularly when I start the project to run the spring line down here into here, it's gonna actually come from up that hill just a little ways and basically run down here and come into here basically. And so we will have water always running right into this pond. That water feeds the pond and then that water helps continue that stream running down that way. So effectively we're diverting the spring water to create a new flow of water through our farm. The spring water can be used for animals like watering the cattle as well as the birds, but then it can also be used for helping support water plants in this area as well. And so I'm very excited about it. And that would not have been possible if I wasn't excluding my birds from this area. And it's got me thinking more and more about how do I continue to move my birds through the pasture? I think I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than I did last year. In recent years, I've completely just let my birds free range 24 seven during the warm months. And I wanna still do that, but I might kind of restrict their movement through this 10 acre pasture. And so, you're gonna see them moving through different parts of the farm and I'm working on how do I like fence some of those pieces off and keep the separation. And so stay tuned because more is to come on that front. It's always remarkable when the farm shifts from the ugliness and brownness of mud season to the full flush green that we have come springtime. I know we're supposed to actually get some more cold in the next few days and even today it's like, I think it's like 38 degrees or so. Spring's definitely coming here. Of course, those girls definitely want to be running out here pretty soon. I got to give it a few more weeks before I put them out here. If I move them out too soon, they can damage the pasture. And so I would say it's probably at least another three, maybe even four weeks before we get the gals out onto pasture. But who knows, it could be sooner. It's all very weather dependent. You want to come with me and you can meet the newest members of the farm? I can use your help. You gotta be on good behavior here, sweetie. I'm gonna introduce you to the pigs. I know, I know, you're excited. There's some foreign smells that you're not used to over here. Now, I don't intend the dogs to have really much access to the pigs. I just want to introduce them so they don't constantly bark at them and freak out at them and freak out the pigs in turn. Uh-oh, looks like you got a third eye here. Let me squeegee it for you. Burdock. There you go. What are those? Abby, come here. I didn't know her any better. I would say that she's scared. They're just sleeping away in there. Looks like they chowed down on those grains and enjoyed them. Now they're just napping and enjoying their pig glue. But I don't think Abby wants to have anything to do with them. She seems scared. I mean, look at her body language. She's even got her tail between her legs. She's moving around all skittish-like. She's sniffing around, very curious. That's not normal Abby behavior. And my hunch is because it's the pigs. There's an egg for you. You can have that egg. I know, you love eating your eggs. It's an egg for the new girl. Abby's like, wait a minute. Why do they get more eggs than I got? <laughs> Abby, calm down. Abby, calm down. <laughs> it's like you just noticed them. <laughs> That's kind of funny, girl. If I had to guess, I bet those pigs are more scared of Abby than Abby's scared of the pigs. It's okay, Abby. It's okay. They're just pigs. You're not gonna have to deal with them much. No. They're just pigs. And please watch out for that electric fence line. I don't want you to zap yourself. Toby seems like he's getting more used to them. Even though when she went on alert, he went on alert. But it's gonna probably take her some time to get used to it. All right, let's go back inside. I gotta go feed the dogs and cats and get back inside because it's gonna be raining cats and dogs. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this update. If you wanna learn more about our farm, be sure to check out either one of these. Thanks for watching everybody.